We are living through some serious times right now. In our lifetimes, we have never experienced a pandemic that impacted the world the way that coronavirus, COVID-19 is. People are scared, grocery store shelves are empty, schools are closed, graduations have been canceled, and we are being told to stay home for our own safety. In the midst of all of this, what are you supposed to do? But a better question is, what does God want you to do? So stay tuned because in today's episode, I'm going to share with you five things God wants you to do during this coronavirus pandemic. Hello, extraordinary child of God. If you're looking to transition your life from where you are to where God wants you to be, then you, my friend, are in the right place. If this is your first time visiting my channel, why don't you join our community by hitting that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you don't miss another episode. Also, be sure to connect with me on Instagram. My handle is at Simona Watts. Go check out my page and connect with me there. There are five key things I need to share with you today. And because I believe they are so important, I'm going to give them to you in an acronym so that you can remember them easily. And that acronym is FAITH. So if you haven't guessed it already, the F stands for FAITH. You've got to have faith in times like these. We are living in the last days of this Earth's history. And as time continues to progress and the devil continues to work on the hearts of men, something very strange will happen. And that something is the fact that there will be a shortage of faith on the earth. In Luke 18, 8, Jesus says, when the son of man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? When Jesus comes again to take his children home, he is looking for those who have faith. Now, if you feel like you don't have faith, don't let the enemy beat you up about that. Because Paul tells us in Romans 12, 3, that God has given every man a measure of faith. So you've got at least a little bit of faith. Now all you have to do is go to God and cry out to him, asking him to increase your faith. There's a lot of talk about faith over fear, which I couldn't agree with more. We can't waste time entertaining fear when we need to be growing faith. But I also want to suggest to you that faith has to come over presumption. Faith over presumption. Because presumption will mess you up every time. Undoubtedly, there are some people who will presume that God will miraculously, miraculously protect them from catching the coronavirus and as a result will refuse to take the proper precautions. My friends, that's not faith. That is presumption. I know of people who went to do missionary work on the beautiful continent of Africa and they chose not to take malaria pills believing that God would protect them from the disease. And guess what? They got malaria. We cannot be presumptuous. Faith without works is dead. And if God has been so kind to provide us with knowledge regarding the spread and the course of this disease, I'm pretty sure he did it so that we can use the wisdom and follow the necessary precautions. That's his protection. But to be clear, I am in no way suggesting that God can't miraculously protect you because he absolutely can. But the question is, will he when you are actively choosing not to take the proper steps to protect yourself? Remember, Noah had all the faith in the world that God would protect him and his family from the waters of the flood, but he still had to build the boat. The A in faith is going to be accountability. During this time, it's very likely that you'll be home at your house more than you ever have. The hustle and bustle of life has kind of come to a standstill for many. I know for myself and my kids out of school, it means that I had to put together a schedule to occupy our time. But as you're adjusting to this new norm of staying home, Hold yourself accountable as to how you spend your time. You see, this is the perfect time for you to dig deeper in God's word and draw closer to him. Yes, I know it's so tempting to catch up on all your favorites or the must-sees on Netflix. I get it. There are some things I plan to see myself. But keep this scripture in mind. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Romans 14, 11 through 12. The day is coming when you are going to have to give an account of your life to God. And God forbid that day come and God looks at you and says, those dreadful words none of us want to hear. I never knew you. 
So during this time, just be balanced. Make sure that the time spent with God takes a greater priority to other things. Put the time in. And if you have kids, you got to make sure that that applies to them as well. They need to be spending time with God too. The I in faith stands for immunity. If there has ever been a time when you need to make sure that your immune system is strong, it's now. Remember back in December, early January, when you were making all those commitments to do better health-wise for 2020? Well, it's time to make good on those commitments. In our house, I'm making sure we take our vitamin D because we're all vitamin D deficient. We're drinking our green drink, taking our vitamins, eating our fruits and veggies, drinking our water, exercising, and doing our best to get a good night's rest. The best defense against the coronavirus is having an immune system that is so strong that when you're exposed to it, your body naturally fights it off. The T in faith is to trust God. Listen, in life, there are no guarantees. I don't care how holy you are, how holy you aren't, how healthy you are or how healthy you aren't, how old or how young you are, stuff happens. And it happens to the best and to the worst of us. So the fact is you could get the virus and you could be symptomatic and there's a chance that you could become so ill that you could even die. Now, I'm not trying to scare you, but I've got to give you real talk. And keep in mind, this is coming from someone who never in her wildest dreams could have imagined that her five-year-old son would have cancer and then actually die from it. Stuff happens, which is why we have to trust God at all times. Not just trusting him to keep us from trouble, but also to protect our minds when we have to endure trouble. Trust God. And finally, the H in faith is for the heart of Christ. You need to have the heart of Christ. And the heart of Christ is one that cares for others. Care for others during this time. If you are a younger person who has a very low chance of being negatively impacted by the virus, keep the elderly in mind. It's not about you, it's about others who can be put at risk because of you. Also, when you go to the grocery store, by all means, get what you need. If your family needs two packs of toilet paper, get two packs. But be mindful of others who are coming behind you before you make the decision to stock up for a year. In everything that we do, we have to keep others in mind. With God's help, we can make the best of this pandemic and we can make it through giving his name honor and glory. We just have to make sure that we have faith. God bless, I'll see you next week. And to my extraordinary living community, I am so sorry I missed you guys last week. I had a lot going on, life, and um, I missed the episode, but I'm here this week and prayerfully you will see me again on Thursday. But before I go, you know what I'm about to say. Remember that you are extraordinary through Christ and don't you ever forget it. God bless. See you next week.